part of B.3 cash structure. In this video, we need to learn the structure of the cash. How do we arrange cash blocks inside cash so that we can find it? Yeah, so we need that part. All right, so let's look at the, how an address is divided. Here, why we need to divide a memory address? The reason is very simple. How many bits are there for a memory address? How many bits are there for a cache address? We know the number of cache locations is much smaller than the number of memory locations. Huge difference. Huge difference. Okay, yeah. In that case, the original memory address has to be divided into multiple pieces. And for, the, for a cache address, we only need to use a portion of the bits. We do not need to use all the bits in the memory address for our cache address. So for that reason, so we need to do that kind of division. All right, so here, I let me use a diagram to describe the division. Yeah. The first time when we do division, so, so this address, the whole memory address, okay, the whole memory address. All right, the first time, the first division, we need to div do it twice. The first division is between block address and the block offset. All right, so here, we cut here. So this part, yeah, the larger part, block address, block address, okay? One cache block in a cache, you, you can have a block address, right? Yeah, block, so we, we call that part block address and this part block offset so why block offset so we know the meaning of offset right yeah so the reason we call block offset first this part corresponds to the whole block this is the whole block uh 64b right the most frequently used the block size 64b eight double words a times a a double words 64 bytes then each individual double word so we we treat you know each word double word so the requested double word is just a one of the eight double words in the cache block one of the eight in a cache block but which one yeah there are eight different possible locations in a block so which one in in the block so that's the block offset that's the block offset yeah because there are eight double words eight different locations in a block all right so then two cube so this many locations in the block so the block offset so you can see the block offset location in a block yeah all right yeah but there is a block size, right? Yeah, so block offset, but each block AB. Yeah. So you put together, you know, one block, this uh, two to the six B. Yeah. All right. Last six bits. 
in memory address. So you can look at this way. Last six bits in memory address corresponds to this part. Okay, um, all right. Then the remaining, the block address. But the block address, we also need to do further division. Yeah, further division. So the block frame address, block frame address here, yeah. Frame address. The same as the block address, right? block frame address. Yeah. Can be further divided into tag field and index field. Tag field. So from the name, you know, it's just a tag, right? The tag. Then the second part, index. So you know the index corresponds to the locations. Tag, nothing to do with location. Nothing to do with location. Just tag, you know, is a as a name, right? Tag just like a name. Yeah. Identifier, you know, or you know, things we use tag for mapping, matching, matching. You know, yeah, that purpose. Yeah. How to use the fields. Yeah. The block offset selects the desired data. Data here, we mean double word, double word. Yeah. Okay. Desired double word, desired data from the block. Okay, the double word, yeah, so I just des describe here desired double word in the block okay then the index field selects the set index field corresponds to the set location okay set each set has a location right set location so one index corresponds to one set one to one correspondence okay the number of bits for the index field, so you have the number of sets in the cache. All right. Then each set, you know, there are certain number of cache slots. Two-way, four-way, eight-way. Two-way, four-way, eight-way. So now, so you can get a whole structure of the cache whole structure of the cache okay all right yeah. all right so next yeah so here yeah yeah we also call a set address okay has so I cover that yeah all right set address index we also call set address okay yeah all right the tag field is compared against it for a hit. The purpose using tag field for comparison, for matching. If the requested cache block is matched by the current cache block we are looking at. Okay? So how do you know it is matched? We compare the tag field. Okay, yeah. So next slide, we will look at this a little more. Yeah. Now, example, simple example to show you how to use all these fields. Yeah. Given cache address, here I use concrete numbers. Suppose our memory address has 40 bits. 40 bits. Okay, all right. Then, the first split related to the block size. Block size 64 bytes. That's 2 to the 6th power of byte. Yeah, B. Okay, yeah. Then the block offset field, that 6 bit. Last 6 bits, so we chop memory address. Last 6 bits, that part, yeah, that's the block offset part okay yeah that remaining 34 bits All right. then for the 34 bits
how many bits do we use for index? How many bits do we use for the tag field? It depends on the cache size. What is your cache size, right? In this example, we use cache size 64 KB. 64 KB, the size, pretty small, yeah. Old cache, long time ago, yeah. That is the size, okay, yeah. Then let us calculate the number of blocks in the cache. Yeah, cache size, right. Cache size, first, let us write 64 KB. If we write it to power of 2, how do we write power of 2? 64, 64, 2 to the 6, right? K, 2 to the 10, right? Yeah, 2 to the 16. All right, that's the total number of B. That's the B, okay? Then, each block takes 2 to the 6th B. We do division. We do division to get a number of blocks in the cache. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And we assume here we use two-way set associated. So when we do division, you can see we will get 2 to the 10th number of slots. 2 to the 10th, the number of blocks in the cache. All right. Then we assume we use two-way set associative, two-way. So then we do another division by two, so we get number of sets, two to the ninth. Two to the ninth. Another division by this two divided by, yeah, here, yeah, two to the ninth. That corresponds to the index. That corresponds to the index field. So the nine bits for the index field, remaining 25 bits for the tag. That's the structure. From this example, so this diagram, you can understand how do we distribute the bits, all the bits of a memory address to different parts in the cache. Okay, yeah. All right. Next, so let me explain comparison. How do we match a requested cache block to the one in the cache? No need to compare the whole address. We just want to compare the minimum number of bits to get a match. We do not need to compare all of them. The more you compare the bits, the slower, right? The fewer number of bits to compare, the faster. So let's look at how do we do the comparison. So although the comparison could be made on more of the address, all the, the bits in the memory address, you can compare all of them, right? So the natural comparison. But actually, you do not need more than just than the tag. Yeah. There is no need because of the following. There, based on the cache structure, some parts you do not need to compare for a matching. Yeah. So let's take a look. The first, the offset could not be used for in the comparison. We do not compare the offset part. We don't need to compare the last six bits offset part. Why? The reason is simple. Since the entire block is present, that block already in the cache present, so you do not need to look at the last six bits. Okay? Yeah. Uh, present, yeah. So the, the offset part, we only use that part, offset part for later when we need to select a requested a double word when we only need to get the requested a double word 
Then we look at the offset part. We already know, oh, this cash block is the one we want to take. After that, if we need to retrieve the requested double word, then we look at the offset. Before that, we don't look at the offset part. Yeah, so that's the reason. Yeah. Next, checking the index. is where you use the index field. Index field tells you which set to go, right? So you at that part, you already use the index field to find the right set location. After you get into the set, you do not need to use the index bits anymore. You know, this is the right place to find the requested cache block. So within the set, you only need to compare the tag field. Yeah. The index part already, you know, it's there. Yeah. You do not need that. That is redundant. If you look at the index part, that is redundant. Wasting time. You only look at the tag field within that set for a matching yeah. all right so that's the the mapping part yeah all right so then block replacement strategies in other yeah because you need to do block replacement okay all the block must be replaced by the new block yeah. then you need to consider the you know, good way, the way so that is more efficient. Here, there are three strategies you can use. The first one, the random strategy. When you do replacement, just randomly select one and replace. So this is the easiest one, random selection. Yeah. To spread a location uniformly, yeah, so anywhere in the block, so you can select, right? Yeah. Candidate blocks are randomly selected. It is simple to build in hardware. The algorithm is simple. Which block to replace in the cache? Randomly select one, then replace. So this is the simplest strategy. Yeah. Second, this is different. Recently used least recently used yeah. least recently used l r u why this way it's pretty natural we want to take advantage of the principle of locality right least recently used that if we replace that one then we can take advantage of principle of locality the most so this strategy is based on the principle of locality. Take advantage of that. Yeah. All right. To, to do that, to reduce the chance of throwing out the information that will be needed soon. Yeah. Temporal locality, right? Temporal locality soon. Yeah. Access to blocks are recorded. In order to implement this algorithm, you need to store the block access information. Keep track of the access time. This step will make this method more expensive. Because you need to keep track of the access time information. When you need to determine which block to replace, you need to compare which one is least recently accessed, right? So that is pretty complicated. That is pretty complicated. So that's the disadvantage of this method. Okay, yeah. The last one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
So here, all right. Here, yeah, another issue. Yeah. As the number of blocks to keep track of increases, LRU becomes increasingly expensive and is usually only approximate. Yeah. So then, if increasingly, increasingly expensive, then the cost will be higher. The algorithm, the computation cost will be higher. So the overall performance may not be very good. May not be very good. Too complicated. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So then the third strategy, the third strategy. Yeah. First. First in, first out. Another way, first in, first out. The, you also keep track of the order. The first thing, uh, the, the first time a cache get, block get in, so then in the replacement, so that's the first out. First thing, first out. You also need to keep track of the loading order. Yeah. So the order, you maintain the order, the cash block, the cash blocks are loaded into the cash. Maintain that order. But that maintenance is much simpler than least LRU. Sim much simpler. Because you do not need to, you, you do not need to record the time that is accessed, right? You don't need to record that. You only need to maintain the order. So you keep that some queue, you know, yeah, some order, natural order. You maintain that. That cost relatively small. So that means if we use this way, first thing first out, this way, first, it is better than random, right? Yep. Yeah. Because you take advantage partially principle of locality. So not as good the you know the way you use the principle of locality, not as good as LRU, but partially reflect the principle of locality. But the keep tracking part much cheaper than L, that of LRU. So you, you can get idea, yeah. In the real world situation, these two methods should be considered, yeah. But not LRU. LRU is not, not, not very good, yeah. All right, so that's the uh, B.3, yeah. The last one, B.4, we will learn a very important topic, average memory access time. So that's a big important topic for this part B. All right, so let's...